My All-Australian team for 2023 out of the squad that was selected of 44 players. Let's get right into it, starting off with the fullbacks. Now, I think Harris Andrews has had a mega year when it comes to intercept marking and just organising the Brisbane Lions backline as a whole, and he is a main reason of why the Lions are top two. He is an organiser, he's a leader, he's a composer, he just knows how to get the best out of his backline, and um, yeah, he's a real leader down there. Such a gun when it comes to just pinching marks off the opposition's best forward. Harris Andrews has to be in there. Jacob Wiegering, for me, is the best fullback this year. I think he's our career best year with Carlton. First half of the year, I think he was one of Carlton's better players when the Blues were playing some horrific footy, but then obviously in this back half of the year, or this back eight games of the year when they've gone on this massive winning streak, he has probably been one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, why Carlton have been conceding so little and scoring so much. You know, whenever the ball comes down there, he's crunching it up, and he's quickly moving it on. Um, such a good starter of play from the back line. What a player Jake Weathering is. James Sicily from Hawthorne. Uh, Sicily's an interesting one because he really is the only Hawthorne backman that's doing anything. I mean, the only other tall backs I've got down there are guys like James Blank. Like, they're such a young side, and Sicily is the captain, he's the leader. And in this position, he's really the only, like, smaller intercept defender in the squad. Um, apart from Luke Grind, who I didn't feel was uh, good enough to make the All-Australian team this year. So yeah, very interesting one is Sicily, but like he crunches up anything that comes his way. I think the one downfall of Sicily is whenever you put a forward next to him, almost a forward tag, um, he does seem to crumble and the Hawthorne do seem to be easier to score against. But apart from that, I think Sicily is a fantastic player still and he's a just he's the captain, he's the leader and he's the only backman down there at a top-notch level. Let's move now on to the half-back line. <laughs> I mean, it won't be an All-Australian team this year without that man, Nick Dacos. He's missed quite a few games towards the back end of this year with an injury. Not sure when he'll return in finals. Definitely not the first week. Potentially a semi or a prelim. But what a year this guy has had. Second year of footy, and he's the best ball user in the competition. When people say he doesn't have an impact on games, I, it really, I really do just find it mind-boggling if people actually watch how this bloke plays. Like, he, he nails kicks down the middle 40 metres right onto the chest through six defenders. He's an absolutely unbelievable player. His run and gun makes Collingwood so dangerous, and he's been the pie's best player this year, Nick Dacos, in his second year. He's got Brownlow's to come, potentially this year, but definitely in the years in the future. Jordan Dawson for the Adelaide Crows. I'm going to half back because he does have a bigger size. I um, mean, he does play half back a bigger the time. Um, also, I just couldn't justify another centre half back being in the starting 18. But I mean, he's been playing a lot in midfield this year, and the way he just rolls through, they're such a clean ball user. You've got that such good combination of the youth with Rochelle and Saligo, and then you've got the experience of Dawson Laird, even Rory Sloan when he's been getting games. Cleanest ball user for the Adelaide Crows, in my opinion, and an absolute jet, a definite Brownlow chance for this year. Jackson Clare, man, um, what a player he is. Uh, he is just an absolute jack off half back, isn't he? His offensive abilities, being able to provide that run and carry down the wing, as well as his defensive abilities, marking a medium or small forward, absolute jet on both ends of the ground. It wouldn't be an All-Australian team this year, in my opinion, without Jack Sinclair. He's a must for me. And still criminally underrated by the majority of AFL media. Now to the second line. Don't it's Nick brother, it's Josh. Both day crosses in this All-Australian side, they simply ha he simply has to go on the wing. I mean, he's not only probably the best, I think he is the best winger in the competition, I'm going to say, I think Josh Dacos is the best winger in the competition, he's an absolute gun, it's like there's something in the Dacos family where their ball usage is just so much higher than the average football player, like his ball usage, playing kicks on the inside, playing kicks down the line, it's very rare Josh Dacos doesn't hit a target, his defensive pressure as well is a main reason why Collingwood are playing so well, he is just the blueprint for a Collingwood footballer at this point in time, in the way of football, Craig McCray wants them playing, Marcus Sloan Pelly. I don't really know what else to say. Um, he's still only 27. He's got so much footy ahead of him. And this has to be the year he wins the Brownlow, surely. Errol Golgan, man. I'm not sure if it's his second or third year, but geez, he isn't bad, is he? He's probably the player in the competition that racks up most of the ball on the wing. And in a year where Sydney have struggled more than they did last year, he's been that one player that hit, whose form hasn't fluctuated throughout the year. Like, he finds the ball, he uses it well. What a player Errol Golgan is. Half forward. Connor Rose, Port Adelaide, plays midfield, plays forward, he does the lot. Um, he's one of those players 
in that midfield mix with Zach Burgers that can move up and down the ground, forward or midfield. Um, how could you not have him in here? He's a very, very nice footballer on the ice to watch. Charlie Kerno, Coleman medalist, absolute jet. He kicked nine, he kicked 10, he's kicked seven, he's kicked eight. He's kicked bags of goals, left, right and center this year, almost reaching the 80 goal mark. Two straight Coleman's and it should be back to back all Australians for King Charlie. And Dustin Morgan, he's, uh, he's taken up a little bit of a different role this year for Richmond, but he's still making the same impact on the scoreboard and for the team as he did in those best premiership years. I mean, the bloke so many times this season kicked like, 25 touches and three goals a game. His scoreboard impact um, from a player who is so good in the midfield is probably the best in the league. Him and Shai Bolton, they share the low when it comes to scoreboard impact. They've almost been scoring more than the Richmond key forwards this year. Full forward. Starting off with Toby Green, I mean, he just gets better week by week. It was last year we were saying he might be the best player in the competition. There have been a few players who have taken that extra step to being the best player in the competition, but this guy is still a superstar and, in my opinion, the best small forward in the comp. Absolute jet. Taylor Walker for the Crows. He's already had a few All-Australians, and he's going to get another one here, in my opinion. Uh, came down to the final game, but he fell, what, one or two goals short of the Coleman medal. What a stellar year it was from Tech, and he ages like five. Wine. No matter how many years passed, he is still a genuine superstar of the game. And it was quite funny to see how hungry he was for goals in that last game against West Coast, chasing that Coleman. Christian Petrarca, I put him in the full forward line, and some people might say this is just forcing a midfielder into the forward line. No, Petrarca has actually played deep forward a lot of this year, and I feel like I can justify him not just putting him on the half forward line, but putting him in the full forward line, because without playing all of this year, Petrarca hasn't even actually played like as much midfield as you expect it to be that midfield rotation of Jack Viney being the mainstay player and Petrarca laying deep forward pushing up to stoppages that's where he gets all his touches and then taking I mean the amount of goals he kicks in that forward line like Dusty his school would impact while pushing up to stoppages and getting those touches is just so so amazing a really underrated year from Christian Petrarca the followers <laughs> Right, cure the comment saying that Tim English is better than Rowan Marshall. I disagree. I think Rowan Marshall is so, so underrated. I think his around the ground work is better. I think his hit out work is better. I think he's more vital to St Kilda than Tim English is to the Western Bulldog. Rowan Marshall deserves a starting spot on the All-Australian team. That may be controversial, but I don't care. Zach Buggers, it's the one-two punch that he combines with, with Connor Rosie. I mean, what an absolute jet. His clearance work, his ability to hit the scoreboard. Um, still so young. What a player player I gotta have on their hands. Zach Buggers, career best year, and a definite Brownlow shot. Caleb Sarong from Fremantle, the doctors of three players in the All-Australian squad. Luke Jackson, Luke Ryan, not really sure how they ended up there, but Caleb Sarong has to go in the team for me. Uh, definitely Fremantle's biggest impact player this year. The amount of clearances that he wins and the quality of his ball usage is just top shelf. For me, Caleb Sarong, the amount of impact he's had on his team this year, he has to go in the All-Australian team. In a change. <laughs> Alright, I was just roasting Tim English earlier, but he simply has to be an All-Australian, let's be real. I mean, while I think Marshall is better in most aspects than Tim English, Tim English is still elite in all of those aspects. He's an absolute jet, and it would be a dis injustice to not have him in this side. Nick Clarkey for North Melbourne. Uh, third in the Coleman, kicking 70-plus goals in a year when North Melbourne were absolutely atrocious. Tops it off with nine goals in the final round, breaking a 20-game losing streak. I mean, what a jet. Nick Clarkey, North Melbourne. They've also got a real good player on their hands, and they just cannot afford to lose him. Callum Wilkie for St Kilda. I think he had a better first half of the year than he did second half, but I still think he had a good enough year to justify a place in the All-Australian team. In the way that Harris Andrews and Jacob Wienering organise as a mainstays in that back line, I think Callum Wilkie provides the same input to the Saints as Andrews and Wienering do to the Lions and the Blues. And Jack Viney, uh, he's been the mainstay midfielder this year, with Oliver missing a lot of the year and Petrarca laying in the forward line a lot. Jack Viney, career best year in my opinion, and he also just gets better with age. And it surprised me to find out, he's still only 29. He's still got some footy ahead of him. And my head coach for the All-Australian team, it's Michael Voss. I was torn between Michael Voss and Adam Kingsley. Adam Kingsley, I think most people predicted the Giants to win the Wooden Spoon this year, and they've ended up finishing, what, seventh? Unbelievable job from Adam Kingsley, playing the Orange Tsunami footy. But Michael Voss, to pick up a team of players that were playing the most toxic, 
awful brand of football in the first half of the year, only to go and win, what, seven, eight, nine matches in a row, something like that, and finish fifth on the table is just truly astounding. Um, how you can pick up a group of players that were that low to go and play some of the best, most attractive football in the comp deserves a round of applause. Michael Voss, what a year. That's my All-Australian team. Let me know what you disagree with, agree with down in the comments. Subscribe, like if you enjoyed. It helps out the channel massively. I'll see you all next time. Soon to go